Welcome to the first episode of the Chaos Cast, the show where we dissect culture and we investigate the morally repugnant and rotting quagmire that can be found within culture. The presidential debates were Tuesday night, and my God, only one thing can be said about that. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Everyone is truly dumber for having listened to this debate. There are some extremely telling details which came out of it, however, and we're going to go over kind of the highlights and lowlights of this absolute dumpster fire shit show of an American presidential debate. So, of course, as you all know, as we all know, the main headline, the main takeaway the media has um, brought from the debate is that Trump is dog whistling to white nationalism and white supremacy so i want to get into this question but before i do i'm going to say a couple of things that defend trump i'm going to say a couple of things that attack trump and ultimately i cannot even begin to express the level of frustration i feel with his inadequate response to this question i will not sugarcoat it and i will not carry water for trump i mean i'm outspokenly an advocate and a Trump voter. However, that does not mean that I see no flaw in the candidate and find it some type of godsend that this is the candidate I am supporting. It is nothing short of a fucking tragedy that this is the candidate to vote for right now. However, it is, as I can tell... It's the only logical choice. That doesn't mean I'm exactly excited about it, but... And, and, you know, there's often a response, like a emotional response to how much hatred and vehement that gets sprayed towards Trump. I mean, if anything really got me under the Trump camp, it was that he was being unfairly handled by the media, and, you know, this debate was no different whatsoever. So the question begins with... Do you, sir, will you now denounce white supremacy? He's nodding, saying, sure, okay. And the question continues, Chris Wallace says, and militia groups such as we have seen in Portland and in Kenosha. Okay, now we're conflating Proud Boys and Kyle Rittenhouse and the group he was affiliated with, the Boogaloo Boys. We're now conflating all of these things to mean to equal the KKK. That is a moral equivalency that is false. Uh, I don't want to get too far off the rails on this one. It's it's pretty straightforward. The question seemed to be, do you denounce white supremacy and continue to be, do you denounce militias as white supremacists? Do you denounce Kyle Rittenhouse was a white supremacist? Do you denounce Proud Boys as white supremacists? You can't just throw all these things into the same box and say, "Ah, that's the KKK. That's what the media wants to do about literally everything that is right of left. That is why you have Ben Shapiro, an Orthodox Jew, being called a Nazi. You have Candace Owens, a black conservative, being called a white supremacist. And Jordan Peterson, of all people, who his philosophy and his lectures and his tours and his book has brought so many people away from the radical right, from the fringes, getting there to becoming white nationalists. He brought so many people away from that. And, and it's well documented for that matter. He came up with courses and programs to help people design their future and understand their flaws. And he gets labeled as an advocate recruiting for the far right. Are you fucking serious? So, you know, in summation, Trump absolutely fucking it was stupid that he missed this opportunity to speak to the Biden supporters and explain 
the media has been lying to them. This was this was a slam dunk miss, really. He was in center court alone, got the ball through to him, and he literally just threw it the fuck out of bounds. So, no excuse for this behavior. There is no excuse for it, period. It sucked. It was the worst moment of the debate. If he loses the election over it, he absolutely 100% deserves to because that was the slam dunk we needed, he needed, in order to tell people the truth that his campaign, his supporters, are not white supremacists and do not support them. Anyone who does support him, who is white supremacist, he doesn't support them. And the world would be better off without them in it. You know, Trump went on this rant about Antifa and far leftist violence that have been plaguing these areas that it's not the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys that are at fault for these things happening. It was reactionary on their part. And, you know, it was a pretty dumb answer. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Biden's answer, however, was not just pretty dumb. Biden's answer to the proposition that Antifa and BLM are responsible for the impossible violence going on in these places, like the destruction of Kenosha and the more than 100 days of rioting in Portland, which prompted and brought the attention of the Proud Boys, you know. Biden says Antifa doesn't exist and claims Trump's FBI director. He's talking about James Comey here, I guess. I, I've not found this quote yet that he is referring to. I don't doubt it might exist. James Comey is an absolute idiot, you know, who was, who was an Obama director that was fired whenever Trump was put in office. So Biden's response to this, you know, it's Antifa and the far left that are doing this. It's not the damn Proud Boys and white supremacists out here burning down the country. What does Biden respond? Antifa, man, it's an idea. It's not an organization. It's an idea. Wrong. Wrong, Joe. You're wrong. There are more than 4,800 sects of Antifa in North America, brother. There is definitely an organization called Antifa. It is definitely at the helm of responsibility for a lot of the extremist violence we have seen break out in major cities. Hate to break that to you. I know it's not a shock to anybody, including the left. They know it too. They just, you know, have an entire legacy media organization to run cover for their bullshit. This was absolutely unforgivable. This one gaffe by Biden. But, and I'm going to get into the, you know, he had a lot worse things to say than this, but this was an absolute fucking tragedy on stage. And Chris Wallace ran cover for him all night. Every time he said something this stupid, you know, he pushed the seg because Trump is, you know, he's sitting there saying Antifa doesn't exist like Jerry Nadler did to Flecka. And what the hell, you know, how do you let that ride? Trump starts berating him like, are you serious? How do you fucking say that? You know, you get hit in the head with a bat, a cop gets beat over the head with a fucking baseball bat. That's not an idea, dude. The guy wearing a fucking bicycle helmet with a plastic homemade shield made of a Tupperware fucking lid with Antifa plastered across his chest. And, you know, he you go to his Facebook, it says Seattle antifa 104 sect how, how is that not real so i don't blame trump for beating into him on that one and the american public saw it you know chris wallace tried to come in and we're moving on to the next section and and you know his tone was to say that trump is so unpresidential for berating this poor old man for saying the dumbest shit we've ever heard Trump said some really stupid shit, too, and we're going to get to what I think was the biggest gaffe of the whole night because it really implicated everybody. It implicated all three of them as being complete fucking morons not knowing what they're talking about. That was... This month, your administration uh, directed federal agencies to end racial sensitivity training that addresses white privilege or critical race theory. 
Why did you decide to do that, to end racial sensitivity training? And do you believe that there is systemic racism in this country, sir? I ended it because it's racist. I ended it because a lot of people were complaining that they were asked to do things that were absolutely insane, that it was a radical a revolution that was taking place in our military, uh, in our schools, all over the place, and you know it, and so does what, everybody what, what else. Is radical, and he would know. Uh, what is oh, radical was totally about racist. racial sensitivity training? Sir. If you were a certain person, you had no status in life. It was sort of a reversal. And if you look at the people, we were paying people hundreds of thousands of dollars to teach very bad ideas and, frankly, very sick ideas. And, and really, they were teaching people to hate our country. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow that to happen. Wow. Just fucking wow. So what I conclude from this is, first of all, let's get into the question Chris is asking here. It, it seems at the beginning like a... Simple question, sir, you decided to ban racial sensitivity training. Well, that's not what he actually... So later in the question, Chris makes a, a real equivalency that it's critical race theory that he banned being taught to government employees. Critical race theory is not racial sensitivity. It's a very specific thing. Critical race theory or critical theory. I'm reading a book right now. Amazing fucking book, by the way. I've got it right here. It is called Cynical Theories by Helen Pluckrose and James Lindsay of the Sokol Squared Hoax. Um, the subtitle of the book is How Activist Scholarship Made Everything About Race, Gender, and Identity and Why This Harms Everybody. Amazing book. This is like the Rosetta Stone of postmodernism and critical race theory, which we're going to go into very in-depth in future episodes. It's something I'm very passionate about, and I want to talk to people about. So what Trump actually did was ban critical race theory, being paid for, purchased, and taught to government employees. Why that is the case, obviously Trump doesn't fucking know. That's the problem here, is he doesn't understand the thing he banned. He didn't even pick up on the false equivalency being drawn of racial sensitivity to critical race theory. So it's clear he doesn't have a firm grasp on what critical race theory is. Critical race theory is basically a postmodernist, that is a word meaning that it was derived from the Frankfurt School of Thought that is like a French Marxist apologist school of thought that produced a series of thinkers and intellectuals and academics such as Jacques Derrida, Leuthard, um, uh, the, there, there's many, many more that I, I don't come to mind immediately. These people designed a school of thought that is called deconstructionism, where you basically, you question the motives of every person based on their race, gender, and status in life. So Marxism focuses primarily upon social status. This school of thought was highly critical of Marxism even, because a lot of the Marxist philosophers were themselves white, straight men. So this is where identitarianism really starts to get some type of academic weight. It gave rise to things today that are terrible pseudosciences, such as gender studies. The humanities are infested with this social justice warrior bullshit. And critical race theory is literally probably the worst of them all. So Trump doesn't understand that, clearly. He almost made a most unforgivable gaffe had he said what he meant when he was saying this, which is that critical race theory is terrible because it targeted the more male and the more white you are, the less valuable you are to society. Because in critical race theory, it literally teaches people to see everything through the lens of race and gender, sexual orientation, and status or what they call heteronormativity. So, Trump was right to ban this shit. The problem is, he doesn't understand what he banned. He doesn't even know. It seems to me, and, and this is just like a speculation, somebody in his family 
was sought after by by somebody coordinating an effort to fight critical race theory, or he himself was sought after by somebody that understood this issue very con- very um, concretely, and they explained it to him and said, "Look what is happening. You know, look at this. This is terrible." And just highlighted and underlined the very worst aspects of this, saying they are selling this as racial sensitivity training, and in fact, it's just teaching people to hate white men and Christians. That's what it is doing. It is saying that if you're a white person, you're an oppressor. If you're a man, you're an oppressor. If you're a white man, you're a super oppressor, and anybody who is not white or anybody who is not a man or anybody who's not a white man are being oppressed by people who are white or men or white men. Apparently, you know, I'm, I need to make super simplifications because he himself, who banned it, the president of the United States, does not understand the difference in racial sensitivity training and critical theory. So, you know, there you have it. Our country is left at the helm of people who are absolutely disconnected with the culture. They experience the culture through Twitter and through the internet, but they are not actually immersed in it enough to understand some of these things. So it really bothers me, to be completely honest with you. We have, on one side, you know, on Joe Biden's side, they're pushing critical race theory. They're pushing this to be the grand narrative, which, you know, it's kind of hilarious because postmodernism denounces Meta narratives or grand narratives, meaning a that there is or could possibly be some type of underlying foundational explanation to anything. So the it, it's really ironic because critical race theory is a grand narrative. It is a meta narrative all on its own. That narrative is that the foundational underpinning of all society is that. People who set up society, who are in positions of privilege and power, they automatically, through what they would call unrecognized or unconscious bias, set up the society and the laws and the normativity in a way that would benefit their offspring who were, like them, white. It's really, it's a damn tragedy that he doesn't understand this issue better, that he couldn't have made a more coherent, comprehensive argument saying, no, 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 no. I didn't ban racial sensitivity training. What I banned was critical race theory. What I banned was critical theory because it is a pseudoscience based out of postmodernism that teaches people that white people are evil that teaches people America was founded by white, evil people whose sole focus was oppressing minority people. We fought a whole damn civil war. We have a situation where we have 13% black. That's 7% female black population, 6% male black population. If... You take it and wind the clock back, it's quite a bit smaller. It's around 6% population being 3% female, 3% male in the time of the Civil War. And we had literally 160,000 straight white Christian men go to war and fight with another giant swath of the population of straight white supposedly christian men over racism and the ownership of one human being of another it would not have been possible that slavery had been emancipated if it were not for straight white men going to war with their own selves about this. So it doesn't float well with me whatsoever that you can lump with identity. You can just figure out everybody's motives. Now, to be completely honest, this shit burns me up to no end because I hate identity politics. I hate 
the fact that my whiteness or your blackness or anybody's gender or anybody's sexuality, for that matter, should describe anything about them, period. It doesn't. It's a no-go for me. Your being whatever, whether it's a woman or a minority, a, a black person, an indigenous person, whether you're gay, whether you're atheist, whether you're Christian or Orthodox Jew, it doesn't describe who you are to me. It can't. It only tells me certain things that you ascribe to, not what you do or who you are or how you act. That's the issue with this type of thing. Critical race theory tells people that no matter who said X, if they are white, it is a power game. Critical race theory teaches people that a white man can say one thing and it can be invalidated because of his race and gender, but a black woman can say the same thing and it is then val validated and verifiably true because she comes from a place of oppression and victimization. You see where I'm finding an issue with this? It doesn't matter what the person saying the idea is. What matters is the content and substance of the fucking idea. It does not matter what the color of the person, what the height, weight, sexual orientation, what's between their legs. None of that matters. None of it matters. It's the idea. The idea stands on its own merit. If I can pick your idea apart, and I can throw it down on the ground and you can't pick it up and explain why it is relevant, then it's a shitty idea and it should not exist. You know, it should not continue to gain momentum if it sucks. So, and my idea is just the same. So anybody wanting to refute them, you can email me or comment under this video. I thank you very much for hanging out with me. On the first episode of the Chaos Cast, I look forward to hosting you on several more episodes concerning critical race theory and postmodernism. What we're going to do in the future is we're really going to dig into this stuff. We're going to have selected readings from the postmodernists, from the critical race theorists, and we're also going to be watching the presidential election very closely. Extremely interested. You know, I, I glanced, I had to pick just a handful of things that I really cared about to you know, exfoliate completely the acne in the pores of this political system. So, I hope you've enjoyed your time listening to the Chaos Cast. We have, without doubt, the most absolutely insane, batshit crazy political system ever devised, and the Founding Fathers would definitely cringe if they saw that debate. So, all I can tell you, my friends, is... We owe it to our country to create a better civil dialogue. It was almost like an exact replication of the ignorance in our social discourse right now, where one side points a finger at the other, the other side points a finger at the other, the moderator points a finger at both of them, and then they both point a finger back at the moderator. And we're all standing there with fingers pointed at each other, and nobody held responsible, and nobody left to explain where to go from here. It's up to us. Do not look to these damn corrupt politicians to figure out what course our society should take. They will pretend to no end that it should go in whatever direction is most popular. The thing most people believe is not the best thing for the health of the nation, for the wealth of the nation. We must conclude through social discourse through civil dialogue, which I highly endorse and support at all times, we must conclude the best path by discrediting those ideas that suck ass. If we don't figure out which ideas suck, we will be trapped to play them out while the better ideas were unheeded, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about the human mind, about the evolutionary biology of anatomy. We have the tools. We have the toolkit to figure out what is going to be beneficial and what is going to be detrimental. There is no reason we are not using that toolkit. 
There is absolutely no reason. The fact that I'm looking at Donald J. Trump and Joe Biden as my potential ruling class is an absolute blasphemy against the founding fathers. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I really love Trump. I think he has done amazing things. I'm definitely not going to sit here and pretend. I think he's a genius by any means. I don't think he's playing 4D chess. I think he's extremely lucky that he was not a politician. He came in as an outsider. And that a lot of people picked up on what he was saying. That, look, screw these politicians. What we need is somebody that's going to drive home the national economy. It'll make you richer. It'll make me richer. It'll make the world richer. There are a lot of flaws there, nonetheless. It's hard to be a Trump supporter today, probably as hard as it's ever been in you know the, the short while that I've been in this camp. So thank you for tuning into the Chaos Cast, and I would like to give a quick shout-out to one of my close friends, Brian Moore, over at the Patriot Outpost. You can find his page on Facebook at TPO or The Patriot Outpost, and you can also find his 